I actually feel very, very prepared for a um, baseball season, especially a short one. 12 starts is like nothing. So for me, I actually feel like better physically and mentally than I did when I went to spring training uh, with that nagging injury. Lucas Giolito feeling great as he prepares for the baseball season. And there's a ton of excitement surrounding the White Sox right now at summer camp. The schedule's out. They open up against the Twins on July the 24th. But how certain is Lucas that they'll be able to start the season and finish it? Spoke about that and a whole lot more with Lucas Giolito on this edition of the White Sox Talk Podcast brought to you by Wintrust. We talk about how testing has worked with the White Sox so far. Also, his impressions of Luis Robert and Carlos Rodon. Here's a hint. Lucas is impressed. Also, what he thinks about opening the season against the Twins, closing it against the Cubs, and a whole lot more. So it is Lucas Giolito on the White Sox Talk podcast. Here we go. White Sox! White Sox! Go! Go! White Sox! That ball hit deep way back! has put the White Sox ahead. Jimenez leaves the ballpark. You can put it on the board. Yes! We got a chance to do something real special. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. It's time for the White Sox Talk Podcast. All right, Lucas Giolito, White Sox, Spring Train 2.0, Summer Camp, whatever you want to call it. By the way, what are you calling it? Um... I call it spring training two and also summer camp <laughs> together. Yeah. I mean, just depending on, on the vibe I'm feeling in that moment. Well, what has this experience been like? It's been a few days and clearly we're in a different world right now with the virus. What's it been like for you? It, I mean, it's been pretty easy. <laughs> uh, unfortunately um, there's a lot going on and, and there we have, protocols we have to adhere to um, a lot of rules in place uh, it's at the end of the day those rules are there for our protection and and so that we're doing the right thing um, but it's relatively easy I'm in the morning group we're split in between we're split like uh, the team split uh, into two different groups I'm in the morning group which I don't know why they put me in there considering how I am in the morning but I'm, I'm adjusting right now, uh, still getting good work in. Um, but yeah, you show up breakfast, um, you move station to station, everything's pretty laid out. It's just important that, you know, we're trying to keep our masks on when possible and, and not like touching each other and things like that. Um, and then we've, we've had the tests. Uh, I've been tested like two or three times, uh, up to now. So, uh, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. It's like spring training, but like if <laughs> if like half the team was uh, I don't know and going somewhere else, and you don't you you don't really see them at all. So you've been tested two or three times. How long has it taken for you to get results back? Um, the first one antibody test is an immediate. It's it's like one of those things where it like creeps up the. I don't know. They put some solution on it, like creeps up. <laughs> And you see pretty fast the the other one, the saliva test. Uh, I think that we got the results back on that. At least I got mine back two days after. Mm -hmm. So once I was cleared, I was good to go to the field. Throughout Major League Baseball, we're seeing certain teams having issues with the tests, getting test results, getting the tests. Do you feel like you're getting enough testing with the White Sox so far? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'd be, if, if we could do it every day, I'd do it every day. But at the same time, like I understand um, there's only so many resources available. Uh, I, the saliva one really is not invasive. It's not very difficult. You just spit into a tube, takes about a few, a few minutes, get it going, you're out of there. Um, I know there's that type of test where they like go in through your nose and it feels like they're touching your brain. I don't think we're doing that one. So um, you know, I, I, for me, I'm all for whatever keeps us safe and I, we're not going to be safe, but what, whatever keeps us, um, I guess as safe as possible. 
And uh, so far, I have seen no issues with my tests or, or any of my teammates. Hey, you say an interesting word, and that is safe. So Chris Bryant said he doesn't feel safe right now doing this. But you have other examples of people feeling fine. And you even said it yourself, you know, about your safety, you know, you're not going to be 100% safe in this scenario. So what is your thinking right now as you approach this, knowing we don't exactly know too much about this virus and whether people are going to get it or not? And then what happens if you do? Yeah, I, there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, my wife is in the, the medical field. She's in veterinary school. Um, there's professors at her, at her school that have studied the coronavirus, uh, coronavirus in animals. There's like a lot of coronaviruses. Like if you're to like look into it more, uh, you know, kind of starting with animals, I guess the one that we got is technically from a bat. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know the most. Uh, whenever I do have questions, I usually direct them towards Ari, uh, and and she can kind of pull up the facts that are that are real. Um, and it's obviously very serious. I, I just think it's important that we do everything we can. Um, which I, you know, looking around the clubhouse these last few days in our summer camp here. I feel like everyone on the team is taking it seriously. We're doing a pretty solid job of uh, adhering to all the rules. Um, and so it is what it is. Uh, I'm not 100% confident that we're going to get through a season this year, but I have to prepare for it mentally, physically, and be ready to go. Um, we all we all have to. Uh, but at the same time, guys that are opting out, I completely understand. Did you think about opting out or were you in all the way? I'm in a position in my career where it's really important that I, I get out there and play. Um, you know, most of the guys opting out already have made their, their fortunes in this game. Um, so for me, getting that experience, um, you know, putting myself in a good position for the, for the future of my career is, is important. So it's unfortunately a risk that <clears throat> I'm taking and many of my teammates are taking. At the same time, uh, we're interested in winning and we're not going to win if we're not playing. So, What kind of challenge do you think this is? It's, we're trying to predict an unknown future about you know, how this season will progress. And it's funny because like I'm watching you guys work out today and it seems pretty normal. I mean, actually very normal while you guys are out there and playing other than, you know, the coaches wearing masks, but to pull <clears throat> off a season, like what kind of challenge do you think this is going to be for the league to be actually be able to play the whole season and finish it through? Yeah, I think it's going to be an extreme challenge for sure. Um, you know, that that's, I think something that kind of got lost uh, in the negotiations um, between the PA and, and MLB is like, hold on, <laughs> you know, we can talk about all these other things, but when it comes down to it at the end of the day, uh, are we going to be able to do this? Not because of money, not because of, uh, you know, certain things in a contract, but because of what's going on in this world. And um, I'm in a position as a player where I, I do have to trust the um, medical community uh, the experts, scientists, uh, whoever, doctors that uh, MLB has staffed, that uh, the individual teams have staffed to provide the best route possible to like navigate through this year. Um, that's all that I can do as a player. Uh, I'm, I'm following protocol. Uh, you know, I go in for my warn morning group work. And then after that, it's straight back to my apartment, uh, either cooking or ordering food, not really leaving. Uh, you know, that's, that's, I think one of the most important things as well is that is what are we doing players and staff away from the field? Um, cause we do have a, a very strict protocol in place when we are at the field. I'm, you've seen it. Uh, we're all living that now. 
but when we are away from the field, are we social distancing, wearing our masks when we go to the grocery store, doing this and that, or, you know, going out to bars and, and restaurants and you know, hanging out with a bunch of random people. Um, that's going to be the biggest challenge I think uh, for all the, you know, everyone involved in this is coming together and saying, Hey, you know, this is, this is like the normal right now. This is what we got to do if we want to make this work. Have you guys as a team discussed this yet about the responsibility that each and every one of you has to pull this off, at least for your team? Uh, yes, we, we have briefly, we had a zoom, we had a zoom call as a team, um, like right before the test came back and we were cleared to go. But I think that it's going to be important to continue to reiterate that uh, once we're all like actually together and, and not in the split work groups, um, or maybe we get another Zoom call going. I'm not really sure how it's going to work. I think it's going to be important that team leaders, um, both coaches and players, continue to reiterate that. Um, that I think the biggest responsibility is going to be what are we doing away from the field? Andrew Miller of the Cardinals said, you know, he's got some doubt that there is even going to be a season because of what they're up against. Do you believe that? Um, uh, kind of, I, I, I just think that the way the numbers are going, it's not super promising. Um, but you know, at the same time, I, I'm one player in this. There's only so much I can do. I'm trying to follow the rules, protocols, do everything I can, communicate to others to do it as well. And uh, I think that if we can do that and guys are being safe away from the field, then there's a pretty good chance we could at least get it started. I know. Just get it started. I, I mean, the way I'm seeing it, and it, I'm going to say if, and it's a big if, but if everyone, like you said, does what they're supposed to do, you've got a good chance. I'll say it, a good chance. Would you agree with a good chance to finish the season? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but at the same time, like you never know what, what's going to happen. Um, you know, you saw, you know, numbers go up, go down, um, states open up. And when the states open up, the numbers are going back up. It's like, all right, um, obviously this thing is not being close to finished. Um, you know, we're trying to, to do our work in the face of that. Uh, it, it's definitely challenging. And I, I just, you know, I can't reiterate enough how, how important it is to continue to practice uh, the social distancing, you know, all, all the things that pretty much everyone knows about by now. I was watching you today and you were watching Dylan Cease throwing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and actually at one point I, I, you, you put a mask on to watch him. Now, why did you, I was just, I was trying to get in your thought process. Like, why did you just decide, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be around some people. I'm going to put on a mask. Yeah. So I, I had finished up my work in the outfield and then I was like going to go inside. I was like, Oh wait, actually, uh, these guys have live bullpens. So I just went over there to start watching. And then I kind of like I look to my left, look to my right. I see the coaches with masks on. I'm like, oh man, what am I doing? I should go and do the same thing. So, um, yeah, it's for me, like throwing, running, all that kind of stuff with the mask on is definitely difficult. But uh, when I'm just standing there watching my teammates, uh, I should probably be doing what we're supposed to be doing. All right, so as we sit here, we don't have the White Sox schedule out, but I do know that they're, you guys are going to, do you know who you're starting the season against, by the way? I think the Twins. Yes, yes. And assuming you're the opening day starter, you would be facing the Twins for your first start. What do you think about that? Sounds like fun to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, a, it's a good lineup. It's a fun challenge for sure. Considering what they did uh, last year, yeah, you you did pretty good against them last year. I looked at your numbers. You mean I like did I did uh, very good one game, very bad one game, and I think pretty okay another game. I don't remember how many starts I had against them last year. 
I should look that up again. I think you might have had four. I know was, one. Of, I know one of them. I gave up three home runs to Nelson Cruz on three different pitch types, which was a first for me. That was pretty fun. So, what was working for you against the Twins, and what was not working for you? Well, other than you giving uh-huh. up three home runs to uh, Nelson Cruz. Um. So, like the CG what was working was the fastball at the top of the zone. And I was also, it was also, I'm trying to remember, I I did a really good job of getting that fastball in on the lefty's hands. Um, And my changeup just had that, like, uh, it had that really good velocity difference that day. It had that good move movement that day. And McCann just called a beautiful game. I didn't shake once. We were in a very good rhythm from the get go. So we just kind of rode that momentum. Um, the bad one, uh, man, off the top of my head, it's, it's hard to remember exactly. Um, I think that my, for sure my rhythm was off. I, I think that I had like a mechanical thing going on where I was like opening up a little too early. My, my, I remember my fastball being flat and when my fastball's flat, my changeup's less effective. I think I was falling behind hitters, gave up a bunch of homers. Now, the other team or date that I know is that you guys are going to finish the regular season against the Cubs. Awesome. What do you think about the possibility? Assuming you guys finish the regular season, you're in a playoff push, and you are finishing the regular season against the Cubs. How about that? No, that would be pretty, that would be pretty fun. I know that like the Chicago sports fans are, it's going to be tough for them to not go to that one. Oh yeah. (laughs) I think they should put like a big screen up in the parking lot and it's almost like a drive-in movie for White Sox fans. If they can't get in the park. Yeah. That's uh, that's not a bad idea. I, I'm interested to see how that plays out. Like once we start playing, um, you know, I, I'm assuming that like tailgating and stuff will be banned. Uh, I wonder how people are going to like, you know, take, take it in, if that makes sense. I don't people know. That are, people that are used to tailgating and going to the games and, and all that kind of, kind but of now, stuff. But now I'm wondering, I mean, if you are socially distanced, why can't you tailgate? Yeah, it's, you know, you, it's like you have designated parking spots and it's like what we do at the field. Like we have a cone in between every spot. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I am not a member of the CDC uh, yeah. or the WHO. Uh, don't take Dr. Garfine's re- advice, but huh. I, think, I think in theory that could work. But um, I, I did want to ask you, like, wh- where your headspace is at for a 60-game season. You're going to have 12 starts, and you know that you don't have the long haul like you normally do. The games are more important, and yet you're also – trying to ramp up for a season and doesn't you don't have the normal amount so it's almost like you're trying to speed things up but you want to slow things down speed things up slow things down so how where is your mind right now and your approach to this unique season and unique setup for where what's going on right now oh yeah me personally i feel more prepared for a season now than i did in spring training um you know, as you know, I, I had that little, I had that little serratus injury going into spring training. I missed out on a lot of bullpen time, a lot of like focus work that I'm used to doing at the end of my off season. I kind of had to rush through that. Uh, I, you know, I, I ended up hurting myself and showing up to spring training, still rehabbing it. Um, I, you know, only had a few bullpens before spring and then uh, I get healthy again. I get back off the mound. I felt really good, but it was kind of weird because I didn't have the amount of work leading up to spring training that I'm used to. Well, with quarantine, <laughs> I had nothing but time to get as much work in as I needed to. Um, luckily I was able to connect with some people out in Sacramento, uh, for, you know, my bullpens training, live bullpens, facing hitters, uh, I was working, I was working like once a week at, at a three inning clip. So 
I actually feel very, very prepared for a um, baseball season, especially a short one. 12 starts is like nothing. So it's, um, you know, it's for me, I actually feel like better physically and mentally than I did when I went to spring training uh, with that nagging injury. So that's just me. I know that everyone's different. Um, based on how I'm seeing the ball come out of guys' hands and, and guys hitting and, and all that over the last few days, like everyone looks like they're in shape. Everyone looks like they're ready to play. They're excited. Um, I'm seeing a lot of good stuff from the pitchers. So I, I don't know. I think that we're in a pretty decent spot. I was watching Edwin Encarnacion hitting batting practice today. Oh, yeah. I mean, now, I mean, he, even like, I mean, Dylan Cease, he, he got a couple of hits off of Cease, I think, but I'm talking about just regular BP. I mm-hmm. mean, guys smoking the ball. Yeah, we have a lot of guys that hit the ball very far. I was, uh, I was talking some trash, trash to Eloy today during the live BP, so he didn't, didn't hit any homers. Yeah, I, you know, Dylan, I know, is like right near you or around you. And I, w- I was fascinated at the Dylan Cease versus Ed, uh, Eloy batting practice, considering the trade. I think Cease dotted a, a fastball low and away on Eloy, 2-2 count. <laughs> Luis Robert looked good, though. Oh, my goodness. He stepped in the box. He stepped in the box against Dylan. It's like one pitch, all right, ball one. Next pitch, ground rule double. And he was probably throwing like 98, too. It's crazy. Yeah, he went off the wall, right? Yeah, yeah. Is, is Dylan, did Dylan hear you say that? Yeah, he's ignoring me. He's on his phone. <laughs> okay. A <laughs> uh, couple more questions. Um, what do you think about the rotation this year? And you're going to get add Carlos Rodon into the mix. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing nothing. But uh, unfortunately, Carlos is in the afternoon group, so I haven't seen him um, since spring training. But – um, I've been hearing nothing but amazing things about the work Carlos has been putting in with his rehab and then transitioning into pitching. Um, I know that he's working on a new breaking ball to complement his slider. Uh, everything I'm hearing, the ball's coming out great. The velocity is there. Uh, I'm excited to, to have a healthy Carlos Rodon back on this squad. Um, we know what he can do when he's healthy. Um, and then, you know, the rest of the pitching staff, you know, we're just continuing to take our steps, take our steps forward. Uh, obviously Dylan has really good stuff. He showed that today. Uh, I think that low, uh, Lopi is, is going to take a big step forward. I think he's in a better place, both with his mechanics and mentally. And so, um, you know, then we get to complement that with our, with our veteran leaders in, in geo and Dallas. And, um, yeah, I think that we just have such a great combination. The communication uh, between starting pitchers is fantastic. Uh, so I think we're only going to get better. Yeah, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm feeling the same way. Just hearing you talk and where this whole thing has been trending. Uh, wanted to ask you about the f- – you flew here, right, from California? Yeah. So what was that like? Um, longest I've ever worn a mask without taking it off, for sure. Um, which was fine. Uh, I didn't, I didn't have any issues. Uh, airports weren't like super crowded or anything. I uh, just like, I, like I've been saying like a broken record. Uh, I stayed away from everybody. I didn't get close to anybody. If I was touching anything, I, I had my hand sanitizer. I was washing my hands. Um, I had like, actually the, the airlines like provided like uh, the sanitary wipes on your seat. So it's like when I went to my seat, I would wipe everything down, like everything I thought I'd, I'd touch around the seat, wipe it all down, and then uh, just got on my iPad and watch TV. And just one last question, and it's just how excited are you to start playing real baseball? Because you now have – you can see it. You know, it's like now you can almost – you can touch it. You're playing it, and it's, it's, it's very close. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, as a team, we're, we're ready to compete. Uh, me personally, it's been a long time coming here. We've been kind of sitting and waiting and waiting. Um, you know, like I said before, it's just important that 
that we continue to follow these rules. We continue to iron them out. If we need to add more or change them, then we'll do that uh, and just try to get this done in the safest way possible. Um, but if I were to remove talking about COVID for a second, uh, just getting back to baseball, it's like being back at home. Um, that's what I love to do and, and uh, can't wait to continue to do it. True, true. Can't wait to see real baseball, real White Sox baseball. And it is scheduled to begin July 24th at home against the Twins on NBC Sports Chicago at 7.10 p.m. Lucas will very likely be the opening day starter for the White Sox. And the White Sox will play three exhibition games leading up to opening day. July 19th at the Cubs, 7.05 start. July 20th, home against the Cubs at 7.10. And then July the 22nd, so two days later, hosting Milwaukee on the south side. Um, my thanks to Lucas Giolito for coming on the podcast. And listen, it's been a long, bumpy road to get to this point. But here we are. Lucas and the White Sox are in town. They're training for the season, and we can only hope it starts and then later finishes with a World Series. And how about a White Sox World Series? I'm good with that. <laughs> uh, and speaking of that schedule, the Sox are getting right down to business. Three at home against the Twins and then three on the road in Cleveland. Back to back. It's a quirky schedule. Seven of their ten games versus Minnesota are at home. Seven of their ten against Cleveland are on the road. I mean, is there much of a home field advantage, home stadium advantage without fans, although we don't know if they'll eventually let fans in the building? Uh, they play the Cubs at Wrigley for a three-game series August 21st through the 23rd, and then they close the regular season at home against the Cubs uh, September 25th through the 27th. And yeah, there should be watch parties. It's got to be a way to have like White Sox fans together, socially distanced, experiencing White Sox baseball together in drive-ins, parking lots, open fields, farmlands, somewhere. We'll see if the White Sox make it happen or some other entity because uh, that would be a lot of fun. And this has been a lot of fun talking with Lucas Giolito. My thanks to him. And my thanks to you for listening to the White Sox Talk podcast brought to you by Wintrust, your home for White Sox checking with free ATMs nationwide. Go to their special White Sox webpage. It is www.wintrust.com slash Sox. Hawk Harrelson. It's all yours. Thanks, our Chuck. And this edition of the White Sox Talk podcast is over.